Shalom family, most high in Christ bless. Officer Yuwana Don Kassad, Columbia, South Carolina. The title of this class today is called Job Not Done. The job's not done. And uh, I want to start, though. I want to start with, um, you know, because we saw something very serious, very monumental yesterday, something that, that would actually, give me Re Revelations 12 real quick. Revelations 12, verse 17. We saw the unity of our nation. Right. And we continue to see it as we walk in this truth here. We continue to see the unity growing, the faith growing. Right. The mercy that the most highs have for us grow. Right. Get that in Revelations chapter 12, verse 17. And this is what's going on. Though. This is the book of Revelations, chapter 12, verse 17. Go ahead. And the dragon was wrong. It says the, the woman. dragon, our enemies, the so-called black Hispanics and Native American. We are the nation of Israel and we have enemies. Our God has enemies, and we have people that do not want to see us gather together. They do not want to see us prosper here. They don't want to see us come out of this captivity here. Read that again. And the dragon was wroth with the woman. We are that woman that the dragon is wroth with now. Read. And went to make war with the remnant of her seed. Can't say it enough. For some, that war is on our mind. We are fighting a spiritual war out here. This is a spiritual war. Right, and we just threw some missiles at him yesterday. Right, read on. Which keep the commandments of God. That's, that's who the war is against. Those that keep the commandments of God, read. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And we have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Right, give me Psalms chapter 50 real quick before we get into the topic. Because this is what they are seeing. And trust me, the dragon is very wrought with the unity and the power that was displayed. Right? And you cannot, you can't underestimate how they viewed what they saw. Psalm chapter 50, I want you to read verse, uh, start at verse 16. Yes, sir. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 50, verse 16. Mm -hmm. But unto the wicked, God saith, what hast thou to do to declare my statutes? So the Most High God is saying, unto the wicked. We know the wicked as Esau. Get that in Malachi real quick, 1 verse 4. It says, but unto the wicked. What hast thou do to declare my statutes? Because we see them all in the Christian church and Catholicism. They teaching, they, they have their hands on the Bible. They're trying to teach us what our Bible means. They're trying to give us what the true doctrine of Christ is. They're trying to tell us who the chosen people of God is. Right? So let's get to who that wicked is. Malachi chapter 1 verse 4. Go ahead. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, uh -huh. but we will return and build the desolate places. Read. Thus saith the Lord of hosts. They shall build, but I will throw down. Go ahead. And they shall and they shall call them the border of wickedness. What shall they call Edom? The border of wickedness. They are the beginning and the end of all wickedness. They are the wicked on this planet Earth. Go back now to Psalm chapter fifty. This is the book of Psalms, chapter fifty, verse sixteen. Go ahead. But the wicked, God saith. So He's telling you, you wicked nations, you the wicked Esau, you Edomites, you devil. He's saying, God saith, read. What hast thou to do to declare my statutes? Go ahead. Or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth? You shouldn't even take the covenant of the Most High God in your mouth. You shouldn't even be speaking about these scriptures. Read. Seeing thou hatest instruction. Because you hate instruction. Nothing you do has anything to do with God. The Most High God sends a, creates a rainbow as a sign, a covenant, to show that he's not going to destroy the earth with water. You use the rainbow for homosexuality. Read. And casteth my words behind thee. And he cast the words behind you. You create doctrines that say that the laws of God are done away with. This is what you do. Read. When thou sawest a thief, uh -huh. then thou con consented. consented it with him. Right. You, you're in league with the thieves. Read. And has been partaker with adulterers. And you're an adulterous nation. A, a lewd nation is what they call it. Read. They givest thy mouth it says, to Read it evil. right. Read it right. Thou givest thy mouth to evil, Read. and thy tongue frameth deceit. We're living our captivity, and our plight here in this captivity here is all based off of deceit, brothers and sisters. We've all been deceived. Some of us may like being deceived, but the ones here that are keeping the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus Christ that are at war, that they're making war with, we're not deceived anymore. We're still learning. Read. Thou sittest and speakest against thy brother. Go ahead. Thou slaughterest. Thou, thy, uh, read it right. Thou slanderest. Thou slanderest 
thine own mother's son. Right, because they call us the thieves and the criminals and we're the hoodlums. We feel we deserve, they create prisons to throw us in, right? But they're the real criminals. How in the world you steal a whole, you, you steal a whole, you steal countries. You steal nationalities, but we are the, the wicked ones and the evil ones here in this planet. You slander it's your own mother's son. Read on. These things has thou done. It says these things, the most I saying, these things has you done, Mr. Wicked. Read. And I kept silent. And he kept silent. Read. Thou thoughtest that I was altogether such an one as thyself. You thought that you was on par with the most high God. Right? You lifted up the head now. You've become proud now. Read. But I will reprove thee. He says he's going to reprove thee, and here's what makes them angry now. We got a couple of images of, um, you know, us coming together. No? All right, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. Read. Read that again. But I will reprove thee. Read. And set them in order before thine eyes. We, have been, we are being set in order right in front of our enemies, right before the eyes of the wicked, and they are angry now. They are angry now. That was, a, that was a nuclear bomb. That they, the, the power that, that is seen that when, when we can come together as a nation of people in order for this gospel to be spread across the four corners of, of the earth right in front of these bastards, that was a heavy, heavy sign. That was a heavy sign. And we must not underestimate our enemies at all, brothers and sisters. So just wanted to touch on that real quick, man, before we get into it. Give me Baruch chapter 3. Yeah, show those images. This is what they're witnessing now. And now as we come together as a nation, they're seeing that there's strength in numbers and there's power in our unity to the point where we can come together now financially. We can come together spiritually. We can come together and build the Most High God's army against them. They see that thing, and there is no end to that. Give me that in Zephaniah chapter 2. That's why we're commanded to do this thing here. Zephaniah chapter 2, while we're in our captivity. While we're in our captivity. Read that. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Sir, Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together. Read that thing with power. Come on, man. Gather yourselves together. Go ahead. Yea, gather together. O nation not desired. So we're commanded to gather together, right? Not just coming together on the Sabbath day and sitting amongst each other. No, gather together. Share our talents. Share our gifts. Come together. Share our finances. Come together as a nation so that we do not have to depend on the wicked and depend on our enemies. The Most High God's will is being done on this earth today. And it's not going to stop. Yeah, you can put that up. And it's not going to stop. Read that again. Zephaniah chapter 2, verse 1. Go ahead. Gather yourselves together. Uh-huh. Yea, gather together. O nation not desired. We're the only people out here that's not desired. And we should be getting tired of being the undesirable ones. We should be getting tired of being told that our skin is ugly. Our hair is, is, not, is not professional enough. It's not beautiful enough. It should, it should bother us to see the level of self, self-hatred that our brothers have for one another, our sisters have for themselves. It should bother us as a nation because we are, we've been told that we've been the undesirables for so long to the point where it's embedded in our spirit. But when they see us coming back together now, It's a big deal. Give me Baruch chapter 3, verse 8 now. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 3, verse 8. Go ahead. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. But here's the thing. Behold, we are still, we are yet this day in our captivity. We we must not think that we are free today as a nation of people. Right? We are still, even though we know that we're Israel, we are still in captivity today. Some of us know that we, we all don't know that we're Israel. That's why we do these classes here. And we don't underestimate the, the level of understanding or the level of faith that our people have, right? It's not just brothers and sisters that know that they're Israel that watch these things. So we have to prove that day in and day out. Read that again. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. Go ahead. Where thou hast scattered us. The most High God has scattered us. We are across the four corners of the earth now. We've been scattered in religions. We've been scattered, um, literally scattered in different countries of the earth. We've been scattered with different languages and things of that nature. Matter of fact, get that in Deuteronomy 28. Whole Baruch chapter 3, though. This is the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28, verse 64. Good, you can pull that up. Go ahead, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 64. Go ahead. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people 
from the one end of the earth even unto the other. So the Bible is saying that the Lord is going to scatter the Israelites from the one end of the earth to the other end of the earth among all people. Read that again from the top. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people mm -hmm. from the one end of the earth even unto the other. Read on. And there thou shalt serve other gods. So it's telling us there, in these lands we're going to serve other gods. Read on. Which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. That our fathers did not know. Read. Even wood and stone. That wood and stone is going into your Christianity and your Islam. Right? And we predominantly, those are the, those are the prominent religions that the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans are caught up here. Right? Give me sign and wonder real quick. No, give me, um, yeah, sign and wonder. Verse 46. Go ahead. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So these curses, us being scattered abroad is one of the curses. And it is a sign that does what? Read. And for a wonder. Uh-huh. And upon thy seed forever. It's going to be on the Israelites forever. These curses identify who the Israelites are today. The so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the Israelites according to the Bible. That's who we are. That's who we be. Go back to Baruch chapter 3 now. Baruch chapter 3 verse 8. Go ahead. Behold, we are yet this day in our captivity. So the Bible is saying we are yet this day in our captivity. Read. Where thou hast scattered us. Where the Most High God has scattered us. And we're being set back in order now through the Spirit of Christ. And you're watching that order be set up. You're watching it being set back up today. Read. For a reproach uh -huh. and a curse. We are the ones that are reproached. Read. And to be subject to payments. And to be subject to payments. Give me those images. And to be subject to payments. Right now, we, as a nation of people, we are the ones that are stressed out. And they'll say, well... Everybody has to pay bills. But the, the bills that we pay and the taxes that we pay does not benefit our nation at all. You can scroll through them. It don't benefit our nation at all. This is how we look on a day-to-day -day basis right here. Read that again. For a reproach uh -huh. and a curse and to be subject to payments. Read on. According to all the iniquities of our fathers. Mm -hmm. Which departed from the Lord our God. Right. So the reason why these things are happening to us is because we departed from our God. It is a curse to be subject to payments. Give me that in Deuteronomy 28, verse 43. It is a curse to be subject to payments. That means that we are in captivity today. Ain't none of us free out here today. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter if you paid your house off. It's something that you still have to do is called paying taxes. And if you don't pay the taxes on that property, brothers and sisters, the wicked comes and takes that thing from you. Read that. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 43. Go ahead. The stranger that is within thee mm -hmm. shall get up above thee very high. The strangers, that is your mixed multitude that came out of, us, came out of Egypt with us, and they were meant to serve us. Read that again. The stranger that is within thee mm -hmm. shall get up above thee very high. It says they will get up above us very high. Read. And thou shall come down very low. And we will be brought down very low. Read. He shall lend to thee. Right. So these payments that we're, we're subject to, that they say every, every other nation has to pay, guess what? The payments that, that they pay benefits their people. The payments that we pay benefits their people we don't get no benefits from the bills that we have to pay and the taxes that we have to pay read on he shall lend to thee it says he shall lend to thee and thou shall not lend to him that should let you know that there's a difference between the nations there we don't own any banks right when we go and we need a new vehicle we have to go to them to get that loan when we want to purchase a home we have to go to them to get that home loan when you want to rent an apartment you have to go to them to rent the, that apartment. And when you have to pay taxes on your property, guess who we have to go? We have to go to them as well. We're not going to our own nation. Read that again, verse 44. He shall lend to thee, mm -hmm. and thou shalt not lend to him. Read. He shall be the head. He shall be the master. And thou shalt be the tail. And we shall be the slaves. All of these curses written in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, Leviticus 26, and all the different scriptures identify who the Israelites are today. And without any shadow of a doubt, it's the so-called black, Hispanics, and Native Americans. We are the Israelites. Give me 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. 
we're leading up to something because knowing that we're Israel is the first thing. We have to know that we are the Israel. We have to believe that thing. We can't waver in our faith in regards to what our nationality is, right? Because when you see us, that's the only way we're going to gather together. And that's the only way we're going to get out of this condition here. Get that in 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8, verse 47. Go ahead. Go. Yet if they shall bethink themselves mm -hmm. in the land, whether they were carried captive. Right, so that is what we must do. We talked about being scattered. We talked about being captives. We talked about being subject to payments. Right? All of these things have to be caught, brought to our minds, right, through the teaching and the reading of these scriptures here so that we identify with what nation of people this happened to and we can see ourselves in these scriptures. That's called bethinking ourselves in this captivity here. Give me, hold that. Give me Baruch 2 verse 30, though. This is the book of Baruch, chapter 2, verse 30. What does it mean to bethink ourselves? Read. For I knew that they would not hear me. Right, because the Most High knew that we wouldn't hear him. The reason why these curses and the reason why we are a downtrodden nation, the reason why we were brought so low, is because we wouldn't hear the Most High God. We didn't serve him with joyfulness and with gladness of heart. Right? We broke our vow to the Most High saying that we would keep the commandments and everything that you tell us to do, Lord, we will do. We broke those things. Read it again. For I knew that they would not hear me. Why? Read. Because it is a stiff-necked people. Because we're stiff-necked people. Read. But He in says, the... but, though. He says, but, I, I know what's going to wake them up. I know what I have to do to wake this stiff-necked, rebellious people that do not want to hear me up. Read that. But in the land of their captivity. Through hard bondage. We have to make sure that they're, they're raped, robbed, murdered, stripped of their heritage, stripped of their nationality, stripped of their names. Their images have to be, be switched from beautiful to, to undesirable. All these things have to happen to these people. Read that again. But. But in the land of their captivity, Go ahead. they shall remember themselves. We'll remember ourselves because the Most High God is setting us back in order before the face of the wicked, before the face of our enemies. Now we're waking up remembering ourselves. Now we, we understand that we Israel, we come into the nation, and now we start working. Give me that in Judges 5. Now we start working, right? We walk through, we say shalom, they tell us welcome home, and now we're beginning to work. Judges 5, verse 11. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Go ahead. They that are delivered. From the noise of archers. The noise of archers is talking about nuclear missiles, nuclear warfare, read. In the places of drawing water. In the places of drawing water. The places of drawing water is your captivity. The drawers of water are slaves. So in the same places that we are captives and that we're bethinking ourselves, read that again from the top. They that are delivered from the noise of archers. Go ahead. In the places of drawing water. Read. There. It says there in these lands, what do we must do? Shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord? Now we're in a dress rehearsal. We're rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. Read. Even the righteous acts towards the inhabitants of his villages. Read on. In Israel. Read. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. Right. Then shall the people of the Lord go down to the gates. So right now we're rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. Let's get righteousness real quick. He was talking about that. That everybody does not know these basics, so we got to make sure that we, we give them the understanding of these basics. Give, you know what righteousness is, right? Yes, sir. Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 25. Read. This and is the it, righteous acts that we have to rehearse. Read on. And it shall be our righteousness. It says, it shall be our righteousness. Not everyone else is right. It's our righteousness. Read. If we observe to do all these commandments. Before the Lord our God. Right. Rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord is coming together in unity under the law, statutes, and commandments of the Most High God in the faith of Jesus Christ. Let's go back to Judges chapter 5 again. Judges chapter 5, verse 11. Go ahead. They that are delivered from the noise of archers uh -huh. in the places of drawing water, there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. There, right here in this land of our captivity, we're now rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. We're changing our dress code. We're doing away with, with, the, with the evil diet and the wicked diet, right? With the diet that defiles our spirit and we start eating a clean, godly diet, right? We, we stop living in fornication, boyfriend and girlfriends, and we get married. 
We do all these different things. We're rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. We're gathering ourselves together, becoming a, a nation that is undesirable to, to our enemies because they see their end coming. But we become a nation that we now desire each other. We love one another. We love the way we look in the mirror each day. Right? We love the fact that we know who we are as a nation of people. We're rehearsing the righteous acts of the Lord. And a lot of times when we, when we do these things, we look for praise. Right? We, we look for a pat on the back. And we, we're supposed to get that. Right? But we have to make sure that when, while we're doing this work here, that we remain humble and understand what the mission is. Give me that, give me that in Luke. We must understand what the mission is. Some of us have, have, have duties in this walk here that, that doesn't get the, the praise. Some brothers, are, brothers and sisters are behind the scenes, so to speak. Right? Everybody's not going to be the one in front of the camera or in front of the congregation. That doesn't mean that their works are not important. Some of these works are, are more important than the ones that you see out there. Right, but we got to make sure that we're doing our job in humility and not seeking praise as we continue to rehearse these righteous acts. Luke chapter 17, verse 7. We must understand that thing. Because we had, we had situations come up where, you know, brothers say, well, damn, man, I, I come to every, every Camp 101. I go to every fly mission, man, but I miss one day, and now, now it's a big deal. It's like I don't get no praise for what I, what I do. Through, I get no credit for what I do throughout the week. Right, but but the second I miss one camp one on one, and now everybody want to want to jump on me, I'm like bro, relax. You miss? Did you miss the camp one on one? Yeah. Well, you got to eat that. You got to eat that. It doesn't matter what you. It, it it does matter, but it doesn't. Right. The work has to continue to get done. It can't stop. It can't stop. Read that in Luke. Luke chapter seventeen, verse seven. Go ahead. But which of you, having a servant plowing? or feeding cattle, uh -huh. will say unto him, by and by, when he is come from the field, go and sit down to me. So he's asking a question. He says, which of you that has a servant, someone that is meant to serve you, after he's come from the field, the servant comes in from the field, you're going to, you're going to, which of you is going to tell him to come and sit down and eat with me? Hey, servant, hey, you, you just came in. Come on, come on and dine with me. Read on. And will not rather say unto him. He said, wouldn't you rather say unto the servant, read. Make ready wherewith I may sup. Go ahead. And gird thyself. Uh-huh. And serve me. He's telling that servant, look, man, you ain't done yet serving me. All right, you did the work in the field, but now I got to eat. So he says, make ready that I may sup and serve me. Your job's not done yet. Read. Till I have eaten and drunken. Go ahead. And afterward. Thou shalt eat and drink. Right, it's a question. He said, so, so after now you've been in the field, you've labored hard in the field all day under the, under the hot sun, you're tired and things of that nature. Now you come in, you may, hey, man, make sure you wash your hands before you serve my food too. Right, now you serve his food, you're eating and drinking. Now does the servant eat and drink? Read on. Doth he thank that servant? Does he do what? Does, does he thank that servant? Is he thanking that servant? Does that servant receive thanks? Read. Because he did the things that were commanded him. Does he give thanks because of the things that was, com and he did the things that was commanded of him? Does he say, hey, thank you, thank you, brother. I mean, see, I mean, a, a nice master would be like, you know, hey, you know, thanks, bro. I appreciate it or something. But does it have to say thank you? That's your job. That's just like thanking your child for brushing their teeth in the morning. Hey, did you brush your teeth? Yes. All right, get out of here. You know what I mean? You shouldn't. That is their job to do. They wash the dishes and things of that nature. You don't have to thank them. They did their job. Did you do your homework? Dad, I did my homework. Good. Now go ahead and get ready for bed. Right, that, that's what you tell him. Read that again. Does he thank that servant? So he's asking, does he thank that servant? Read. Because he did the things that were commanded him. Because he did the things that was commanded of him. Watch what Christ says. Read. I trow not. He says, no. He says, I trow not. Read. So likewise he. says, he. so likewise ye. Now, we have to have that same mindset now. When we start laboring in this walk here, that same mindset. Read. When ye shall have done all those things which I commanded you. All those things that was commanded of us. It's a commandment to get up in the morning and come to the Sabbath. You got some brothers acting like they're doing us a favor because they come to the Sabbath. 
it, you're commanded to do that thing. It's a law. Is it not a law? We're commanded to have fringes on our clothing. Now, of course, there's levels and steps to it. So that brother that, that just walked through those doors, or sister that just walked through those doors, they, they come through and they have fringes. We clap for them. We say, hey, hey, good job, because we know what they came from. But after a while, man, you've been here for a year, two years, three years. We got, we got people that have been here for six, seven years that still act like they're doing us a favor because they, they say, look, man, I, I'll be coming this week. Like, what are we talking about? Read that again. So likewise ye. So likewise ye. Read. When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you. When we've done all those things that are commanded us, what are we supposed to say? Say, we are unprofitable servants. Said, we must say that we are unprofitable servants. Read. We have done that which was our duty to do. Because we did our job. Right? Basically, our mindset now, of course, we know that the nation needs us to do our job, but our mindset behind the work that we do is, man, all praises to the Most High God. All praises, man. All praise. I, I did my I still got more to do. You can't stop. I still got growing to do. Right? All of us sitting here, we, we, we're babes. A lot of us are babes here. Even though we may be, you may see us walk, moving up the ranks and things of that nature, we still got a lot of things to, to knock off of us. We still got disciplines that we have to learn. We still got different, different hang-ups that we have that is causing us not to reach our full potential in this walk here. We still have those things. Okay, now, now, you've, now you're teaching at camp. Okay, now you got to learn how to, how to teach, a, teach an online class. Well, now you have to learn how to teach in a learning circle. Now you have to learn how to teach your family. You got to learn how to teach a lot of, you got to learn how to do a lot of different things. And it's walking. We're still constantly learning, still dealing with fears of change, still dealing with, with changing our spirits to become more austere, become more Christ-like. All those different things we're still working on. So it's not done yet. Read that again. Like, so likewise ye. So our mindset must be as we're working is what? When ye shall have done all those things which are commanded you. Read. Say. We are unprofitable servants. We must say we are, in our back of our minds, we must say we are unprofitable servants. Read. We have done that which was our duty to do. Give me Deuteronomy 10, verse 12. That which was our duty to do. The Most High gave us a duty. He gave us all a job. When we bethink ourselves in the land of our captivities, when he has taken the shackles off of our minds, Right? He's freed us from the, the shackles in our minds that had us celebrating Christmas, that had us having abortions, that had us um, having sex with every man that walked, or every man that you think was cute, and now you're having babies with multiple men and not married to none of them. The shackles in our minds that, that tells us to hate your skin so you start bleaching your skin, or to hate the, the natural, beautiful hair that the Most High God gave us in the image of Himself so that you perm it. Or you, you, you dye it or do all those different things to it. He's freed us from those things. He's given us a job, though. He's given us a duty. Read that. 10 Deuteronomy, verse 12. Chapter 10 verse 12. Go ahead. And now Israel, what doth the Lord thy God require of so thee? So he's asking, what does God require of us? Read. But to fear the Lord thy God. Go ahead. To walk in all his ways and to love him uh -huh. and to serve the Lord thy God. With all thy heart and with all thy soul. Right. Our job is to serve. We're those servants. We are the servants of the Most High. So everything that we do within this nation is a service to God. It's a service to God. Whether you're the, whether you're the men that go out to war each week, each Sabbath, or if you have to stay back on security and, and you can't go out, you, you're still doing a service. You're protecting our family. That's not a light thing. Sometimes we seek that glory. Though. I, I want to go to camp. I, I can't miss camp. Well, you got to stay back for security. Oh, man, now you all in your, all in your feelings because you got to stay back for security. Yet our wives and children are at the school. And what are some nutcase because we want somebody to protect our children? It's not a light work. We got to be mindful of our mindset when we're doing this work here and that we're not seeking after vain glory or seeking after our own glory. All the glory, all the works that we do is of the Most High God. And all of it benefits our nation. All of it does. Read that again. Or read verse 13. Yes, sir. To keep the commandments of the Lord. Read on. And his statutes, which I command thee this day uh -huh. for thy good. For our own good. Now you see us coming together. You're seeing 
the goodness of the keeping of the commandments of the Most High. We keep the commandments of the Most High. Now you got you got young young sons. You're not worried about your son getting some girl pregnant now. You're not worried about your daughter whoring herself out, having abortions or having a baby, getting pregnant within your own household. You're not worried about catching STDs. You're not worried about having a bad diet, so now you got to deal with diabetes, gout, and high blood pressure, obesity, and all those different things. You change, all that stuff benefits us. Our sisters wearing modest apparel, our men learning how to be men and to be rulers. Taking that weak spirit off of us to our good. Give me that in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. What is our duty? Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. This is the book of Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. We've done what was our, we are unprofitable. Read that again. Go back to Luke, hold Ecclesiastes. Go back to Luke 17 real quick. Because we're dealing with what our duty is. Luke 17, verse 10. Luke chapter 17, verse 10. Go ahead. So likewise ye, when ye shall have done all those things, which are commanded you. So when we've done all those things, guess what? We're commanded to give alms as well. We're commanded to support our nation as well. This nation cannot go forth without, without monetary assistance also. We are looking at the greatest work to ever be done on the face of the earth right now. It's happening right now. It's the resurrection of the sons and daughters of the Most High God. And That's we all right. are taking part in that thing. So what we what, what what went down yesterday was heavy, man. It was it was it was crazy. And I know that the that the enemy is wrought. We all know that thing. This is war. And there ain't no turning back. There's no hey, there is no turning back, fam. There is no turning back. It's on. Go back to duty, yo. Get Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13. Go ahead. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. What are we supposed to do? Fear God and keep his commandments. Read. For this is the whole duty of man. Our duty is to fear God and keep his commandments. Love our neighbor and learn how to become, learn how to become brothers and sisters, husbands, wives. Learn how to deal as a nation of people. Loving our neighbor as ourselves. That's our duty. Loving the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul, and all thy mind, keeping his laws. That's our duty. And that's what we're rehearsing right now in the land of our enemies. And that's how the Most High is setting us back in order right before the face of our enemies. He's doing that thing. We are witnessing that. And we cannot take light of that. And we got to make sure our mindset is right. We have the right mind. We cannot be seeking, worried about if we get credit for the job we're doing. You, you know you're getting credit. You're looking at the fruits of our labor now. Give me that in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 2. Proverbs 27, verse 2. Proverbs chapter 27, verse 2. We got to maintain humility. Read. Let another man praise thee. Read. And not thine own mouth. We got to make sure that others are praising us now. And of course we get exhortation from our brothers and sisters. Of course they're going to say, hey, good job. Oh, great bread, sis. You know what I mean? Hey, man, that was a good class you did. Or you know what I mean? Hey, you read well. All those different things, man. Oh, man, great, great march that we did and all that stuff. It says, let a, a great song that you created. It says, let, read that again. Let another man praise thee. Read. And not thine own mouth. And not our own mouth. We can't be seeking our own praise. Read. A stranger. Uh huh. And not thine own lips. Give me Proverbs 25 and 27. Proverbs chapter 25, verse 27. In the back of our minds, it must be we are unprofitable servants. Unprofitable servants, and our job is not done. Read. It is not good to eat much honey. Go ahead. So for men to search their own glory right. is not glory. Right. It says if we're searching our own glory, it's not glory. It's not glory when we're searching our own glory. Glory. Get 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12. Just got to be mindful of that. We're all brought here to make sure that we're dealing with one another as a nation of people and that we're not worried about getting credit or I, I feel like I'm not getting any credit for what I'm doing and things of that nature. That's fine. You are getting credit because the work is still being done. 
You're watching the nation grow. Read that. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 17. Well, read verse 12. 2 Corinthians 10, verse 12 first. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12. Go ahead. For we dare not make ourselves of the number. Read. Or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. Right. We can't make sure that we're not comparing ourselves with them that commend themselves. Read. But they measuring themselves by themselves. Read. And comparing themselves among themselves. Read or what? Are not wise. We're not wise when we commend ourselves among ourselves. That's not wisdom there. Right? We got to make sure that we, we remain humble, understand that we are unprofitable servants, and to continue to push. There's still levels that we got to meet. There's still levels that we got to meet. Now jump to verse 17. Verse 17. But he that glory. What are we supposed to do now? Read. Let him glory in the Lord. Right. Anything, anything that happens, any praise that we get, that goes to the most high God. Any praise that our brothers and sisters are exhorting us to do because we, we need that exhortation. We're not saying not to, that, that we don't need it. Right? To, in order to keep pushing. We're going to give examples of the exhortation that we are getting and that we're supposed to be getting, though. Right? Not, not that a hand clap, okay, is done, you can go sit down. Read that again. But he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Give all the glory to the Most High God when we do this thing. All praises to the Most High. Right? Because you know that it's not me. It's not, it's not you that do it. It's the spirit that the Most High put on you that is, that's performing his acts through you. So glory goes through him. Read on. For, for not he that commendeth himself is approved. Read. But whom the Lord commended. It says, but whom the Lord commended. We're going to look for that, that commend, that um, we want the most high God to commend us. We're going to show you how God is going to commend us. But it's not right now. It's not right now. We must remain humble. Let's get the example of the humility of our brothers and sisters, our forefathers. Let me get Christ real quick. Give me Matthew 19. Matthew 19. Right? Because Christ, verse 16 and 17. Because Christ left us an example of how we should walk when we read Peter's. Right? So this is the example here. Read that. Matthew chapter 19, verse 16. Go ahead. And behold, one came and said unto him, mm -hmm. Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Right. So he said, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Read on. And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? Christ said, Why callest thou me good? Don't call me good. I'm doing what my father commanded me to do. I'm doing my job right now. Read that again. Why callest thou me? Why callest thou me good? Read. There is none good but one. This is Christ now. He performed all miracles. We have portions of his spirit. And he's saying there's only one, none good but one. Read. That is God. Read. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. Do your duty as a servant of the Most High God. Right? Give all the praises to the Most High God. Right? Let's see. Let's give me Acts chapter 14. Let's deal with Paul for a second, right? Because Paul, Paul wasn't doing no small walk, work on this earth, right? And let's see how the people viewed Paul. Let's see how the people viewed Paul, and let's see his response to them. Give me Acts 14, start at verse 8. Acts chapter 14, verse 8. Go ahead. And there sat a certain man at Lystra, uh -huh. impudent in, his, in Imp his feet. Impotent in his feet, read. Being a cripple from his mother's womb. So this man was crippled from, his, from birth. Read on. Who never had walked. And the man never walked. Read on. The same heard Paul speak. Uh-huh. Who steadfastly beholding him and perceiving that he had faith to be healed. And he per Paul, Paul beheld him and he perceived that that man had faith to be healed. He believed that he could be healed and he saw the spirit of Christ in Paul. He knew Paul could heal him. And Paul perceived that thing. Read on. Said with a loud voice, stand upright on thy feet. So Paul told him, stand upright on your feet now. Read. And he leaped and walked. And that same man that didn't walk from birth, he ended up leaping and walking. Paul performed a miracle out there. That's the power. That's our brother from the tribe of Benjamin. This is who we descend from. Great men. So-called black men. Read. 
And when the people saw what Paul had done, Go ahead. they lifted up their voice, saying, in the speech of Lycanonia, <laughs> Go ahead, man. <laughs> the gods are come down to us in the likeness of men. Right. So they said the gods have come down to us in the likeness of men. They, they esteem Paul and Barnabas as gods walking the earth. They esteem them as gods walking the earth because they saw the miracles that, these bro that that brother performed. Read. And they called Barnabas. Ju uh, Jupiter. Jupiter. They called Barnabas Jupiter. Read. And, and Paul. Mercurius. Mercuries. Right. So they called Paul Mercurius. These are Greek gods. Read on. Because he was the chief speaker. Because Paul was the chief speaker, so they associated him with Mercurius. Read on. Then the priest of Jupiter, which was people. Was, I'm sorry, which on, was babe. before their city. Go ahead. Brought oxen and garlands unto the gates. Go ahead. And would have done sacrifice with the people. Right, so they came to do sacrifice with the people. Read. Which when the apostles, Barnabas and Paul, heard of. Now when the apostles, now think about it now. They, they're trying to, they're going to, they're taking Barnabas and Paul as gods. Mercury and Jupiter. They're about to start sacrificing to them, all type of stuff. But when Barnabas and Paul, let's see if they, they took it to the head and said, hey, crown me. And, and wanted all the riches from them and all these things. Let's see what spirit Paul and Barnabas moved in when they saw that thing. Read that again. Verse 14. Which when the apostles. Barnabas and Paul heard of. They rent their clothes. They rent their clothes. It bothered them. Why callest thou me good? Don't esteem me like no God. Are you crazy? What are y'all doing? They rent their clothes. Read. And ran in among the people. Go ahead. out and saying, sirs, why do ye these things? They're saying, what are you doing? Why are you doing these things? Read. We also are men of like passions with you. He says, we are men, brothers. We don't esteem me as no God. You seen that miracle. All that miracles happened because of the spirit of Christ. I received that power of the Holy Ghost to heal because of Christ. I'm not no God here. What are you doing? Read. And preach unto you that ye should turn from these vanities. Right. So Paul is saying, look, man, I'm, I didn't come here to be worshipped by you. I'm preaching unto you to turn from your idolatrous mindset. You, you're sitting there trying to worship any and everything. Now you, you calling me and Barnabas gods. Read on. Unto the living God, which made heaven and earth. He said there's none good but one. That is the living God. This is who you should be worshiping. The living God that made heaven and earth. Read on. And the sea uh -huh. and all things that are therein. The most high God that created all things. That's who you should be worshiping. Read. Who in times past suffered all nations to walk in their own way. Read. Nevertheless, he left not himself Without witness. He left not himself without witness. Read. In that he did good. Go ahead. And gave us rain from heaven. The Most High God gave us rain from heaven. Read. And fruitful seasons. Read on. Filling our hearts with food and gladness. Now watch. <laughs> now Paul is sitting there beseeching them. He's telling them, look, don't worship me. You need to worship the Most High God that gave us rain, that gave us food, made sure we didn't worry about anything. He created the heavens. He created you. You don't need to be worshiping me as no, no Greek God, no idol things of that nature. He said, worship God. Chill with that. Read on. And with these things, scarce restrained, they, the people. And, and even with these restraints, he says he scarcely was able to restrain the people. They was like, man, whatever you say, nigga. <laughs> it was like, whatever, man, you're a God. Read. That they had not done sacrifice unto them. Right. So scarcely he restrained the people that they have not done sacrifice. He didn't want them to do sacrifice unto them. That's the mindset that we have there. Even though we're doing mighty works, our mindset has to be all glory has to go to the most high God. Our job is not done. Get 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Paul said he's not going to glory in his actions. Verse 6. 2 Corinthians 12, verse 6. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 6. Go ahead. For thou, I would well, no, desire. Read it right. Read it right. Come on, baby. For though. I would desire to glory. He said, for though I would desire the glory. Look, that flesh in us, that our spirit wants the glory. Right? Because we know that, that, that it's pleasurable. It feels good to be glorified. It feels good to be like, to say that you're the best. Growing up as a child, you, you run that race and you run and you finish first and you, you want to be known as the best. If you have any type of competitive or you ever dealt with competition before. 
you want to be known as the best. It's not. It's, it's never. You know what I mean? Number two or number three. You're not telling me I'm robbing the Batman. No, I'm the best. It's innately in us to glory. Read. I shall not be a fool. But he said, I'm not going to be a fool, man. I know I can glory. You just see me. I, I have powers to heal. I speak in tongues. I, I got more wisdom than just about anybody out here. Read. For I will say the truth. Go ahead. But now I forbear. He says, now I forbear. Read. Lest any man should think of me above that which he seeth me to be. Right. Don't call me good, man. There's only one good, but that's God. That humility we must, we must keep and understand that thing. Read. Or that he heareth of me. Read. And lest I should be exalted above measure. He says, lest he should be exalted above measure. Read. Through the abundance of the revelation. Go ahead. There was given to me a thorn in the flesh. Paul was given a thorn in the flesh. All of us are given thorn, a thorn or thorns. All of us are given multiple thorns in our flesh. Right? To keep us humble. Every time we, we sit there and we think we're doing a mighty work, here comes that thorn again. These thoughts that, that, that come up in our minds, these evil thoughts, these wicked, ungodly thoughts that, that pop up in our mind daily. All of those different things. Read. The messenger of Satan. The messenger of Satan. Now we're fighting that war against Satan. And, he, and, he's, and he's fighting at our flesh now. And he's trying to deal with all the, the in, imperfections that we have in us, the insecurities that we deal with, right? The weaknesses that we battle, the different sins that we have going on in ourselves, in our minds. Read that again, the messenger. The messenger of Satan to buffet me, mm -hmm. lest I should be exalted above measure. Right, so that messenger of Satan is buffeting us daily in our minds. Give me that, give me the heart. Give me the heart. These things come out of our minds, and we're warring against those things to, to make sure that, because if it's in our minds, it's going to lead to our actions. It starts there, and that's what the ministry of Christ was about, dealing in our conscience, making sure that we get our minds right, transforming our minds. Read that. Mark chapter 7, verse 21. Go ahead. For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts. Adulteries, Go ahead. fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, mm -hmm. lasciviousness. All of these things are different thorns in our flesh. All of these different thoughts are different thorns in our flesh that we deal with. None of us are excluded from these thoughts here that, that, that are in our minds. They're in us. Read. An evil eye, mm -hmm. blasphemy, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. All these evil things come from within and defile the man. Right? So the exhortation that we must, that we must seek after and that we must give to one another is to continue to keep pushing and to never stop quitting in this walk here. Great job, but it's not done yet. Right? You did good works. Oh, 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 good. Okay. Okay. You pass MOV. Oh, good. You're a soldier now. Guess what? You got more to do now. And the levels don't stop. That's what we witnessed yesterday. Read that. Um, give me Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. This is the exhortation. We be that's why when we read Romans 15 and 4, read Romans 15 and 4 real quick. Sorry about that, Rita. Read Romans 15, verse 4. Because a lot we, we start classes off with this all the time because it's a heavy verse. It's, it's a pivotal verse in our repentance. Read that. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. Go ahead. For whatsoever things were written aforetime uh -huh. were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. Right, that patience and comfort of the words that are written in these scriptures gives us hope. You understand it? This is the exhortation that we need here. It's written in the scripts. And when we come together, this is how we exhort one another. Right? We exhort each other to continue to push and to never stop. We are unprofitable servants. We're doing the things that we're commanded to do. It's not over yet. Read that Hebrews 10. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 23. Go ahead. Let us hold fast 
the profession of our faith without wavering. Read. For he is faithful that promised. Right, so it says, let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering. Meaning it's not, we cannot waver in this thing. Now, of course, we're going to have weak times, but that's why we have the nation. That's why we have our brothers and sisters with us. Read on. And let us consider one another. And, and we must consider one another. Read. To provoke. To provoke. To exhort. Read. Unto love and uh -huh. to good works. Unto the keeping of the commandments and to continue to do these good works. Our exhortation never stops. That's why you'll see the hand clap for the sister that made the bread. Because we want to exhort her to do it. And not only her, we want the people to see the exhortation to want to aspire to have that as well. And to do that. Because it's a mighty work. We want that when, when um, the bishops and them come in, you, you stand up and you raise, you give them double honors. Because we want them to continue to work. We're not in the kingdom yet. That exhortation, we need that thing to keep pushing, not to sit on the throne and to chill out. What we saw yesterday was not about the work stopping. It was about making sure we come together as a nation in order for the work to continue to, until we get to the end. It wasn't going. It's not about the work stopping. And our elders understand that. Our leaders understand that. Our officers, our captains, our deacons, our bishops, we, they understand that thing. Read on. Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. Go ahead. As the manner of some so, is. So if, if we struggle with, with coming together, how in the world can we continue to push it? We didn't, if we, we, we got to examine ourselves. Those of us that, that have an issue with gathering together with the nation that const constantly makes excuses why we can't come to something. The school is open. I'm not coming. It's a Sabbath day. I don't know if I can come yet. All these, We got to examine ourselves because that's a selfish act. You're doing it for yourself. You, you, you care more about yourself than your brothers and sisters and for the, and for the Most High's nation coming. If all of us had that mindset, we would not have what we have today. And this truth will not continue to grow. It says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves. Read. As the manner of some is. As a manner of some is that are struggling in the faith. Read. But exhorting one another. Because we need that exhortation. We need that exhortation. We need to see our brothers and sisters. It puts a smile on our face when we see the children running around. Or when we see families together. Or we may see that, that brother that was sick in the hospital and you see him walk through those doors. And I don't think people understand. I don't think the people that separate themselves, you don't understand how much that even to see you that hasn't been, been in, the, in the congregation for, for months, struggling with your sin. When you repent to say, man, I, I got to get, get right. That thing boosts our spirit. We love to see that thing. That, that, keep, that allows us to keep pushing. That lets us know that the Most High God is moving and that there is, there is hope for our people. There's hope for, uh, there's hope for me when, when, I, when I start getting weak in the faith because we see that in our brothers and sisters within the nation and our leaders, and we see the ones that's amongst us. Read that again. As not, the manner of some no, is. No, not forsaken. Read that from the top. Not forsaken the assembling of ourselves together. Uh-huh. As the manner of some is. Go ahead. But exhorting one another. Exhorting one another to do what? Read. And so much the more as you see the day approaching. To continue. That exhortation doesn't stop because we have more work to do. We can't stop. We can't dig our talents and not continue to grow. We can't do that thing. Give me Sirach chapter 43. The exhortation that we receive is, okay, all right, you did this. You went to camp today. Guess what? All right, fly mission tomorrow. Church bliss tomorrow. Conference call tomorrow. Right, fundraiser tomorrow. It can't stop. And then when you don't make it, why wasn't you there? Well, I was tired. I had to go to sleep. And that's not, it, that's, there's no excuse for that. We can't accept that because then that's not us doing our job to continue to push you. We can't make each other quit. We need each other to continue to push. Read that. Sirach 40, 43, verse 30. Sirach chapter 43, verse 30. Go ahead. When ye glorify the Lord. So it tells us when we glorify, we glorify the Lord whenever we do this work here. Whenever we do this work here, whenever we, we put your fringes on, you're glorifying God. 
But you say, hey, don't put no bacon, no pork bacon on my sandwich. You're glorifying God because you do that because the Most High God commanded you to do that. You do that in honor and in reverence of our God. Read. When ye glorify the Lord. Go ahead. Exalt him as much as ye can. It says exhort him as much as you can. Read on. For even yet will he far exceed. The, the grace and mercy that he's had on us, he, he will far exceed anything that we can do for him. Read on. And when ye exalt him. Go ahead. Put forth all your strength. It says put forth all your strength. Read. And be not weary. For ye can never go far enough. We can never go far enough. Give me Hebrews chapter 12. We can never go far. We can never do too much in this walk here. Right? We're learning to discipline ourselves to continue to work and to, and to push ourselves, examine ourselves, to push ourselves to do more. You got brothers going out, traveling now, going to countries. They never even thought of, man, I, hey. Never even thought, growing up, I never thought, you grow up in the projects or something like that, you don't never think you're going to be in Africa. Or you're going to, you know what I mean, you're going to get a passport and travel and do these different things. All you know is the block. Or all you know is the neighborhood and you may go down south or something like that for the summer. Now the goal is, man, hey, man, you got to get your passport and become an international. The level is, there's so many levels that you got to get to. Right, but we can't get comfortable doing, doing just what we're doing, just because you know it may seem mighty. It is mighty. It's a great work, but it never stops. Read that Hebrews twelve verse one. We're gonna read through four. Hebrews chapter twelve verse one. Go ahead. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Go ahead. Let us lay aside every weight. Uh huh. And the sin which the which does so so easily. Beset right, us. we can't worry about the sin. We can't allow the sin or those those thoughts that we read and that those thorns in the flesh to continue to knock us down. We got to let those things go and keep pushing because that, that's what stops us. That's the one that forsakes. That's what causes you to forsake the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is. Jude says they, they don't have the spirit. That's what stops us. Those sins easily besets us. Read. And let us run with patience the race, the race that is set before us. Read on. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Christ is the author and finisher of our faith. He tells us when our faith is over. And he, and he, and he actually has it documented in the scriptures when our job is going to be done. Read. Who for the joy that was set before him. Uh-huh. Endured the cross. Go ahead. Despising the shame. Christ endured the cross. Read. And is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Go ahead. For consider him that endured. So now he's telling, Paul is telling him, consider him that endured that thing. Consider who did that. What man con considered. Consider him that endured the cross. And that took joy in doing that thing. Dying for his nation. Dying because of the dying to perform the will of his God. He said, consider that now. Read that again from the top. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. Because Christ didn't deserve that. He did his job. But the man walked perfectly on the earth. He didn't deserve that. He didn't deserve to be put to death. We deserve to be put to death for the sins that we've committed. He died. He did those things so that we can be reconciled unto him. Read on. Lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. Right. We must consider him that did those things lest we be weary now. Christ did all that for us that didn't deserve it. Who are we now to get weary in the faith and weary in the mind and to think that our job is done? I'm tired of working. I'm tired. I did this. Man, look, man, I come every week. I need, I need one week off. What, what's Sunday? What's Sunday? Sunday is the Israelite um, day off. You work Monday through Friday, Sabbath come, that's, that's work, you know, we're doing the work of the Lord. So Sunday, brothers, is MIA, unless it's time to go bowling or something like that. And the other thing, though, man, this is my only day of the week that I got to sit down and lay down and chill. So I'm not going to do Camp 101. I'm not going to do no fly missions. I'm not going to no church blitz. I can't be reached on Sunday. I got to have at least one day off. Read that again, man. For consider him that endured 
such co- contradiction of sinners against himself. Read. Lest ye be weary and faint in your minds. We always must have Christ and what he went through in the back of our minds. Unless we be weary. Read on. Ye have not yet resisted. What is that exhortation? Ye have not yet resisted unto blood. Read. Striving against sin. The exhortation that we receive is to resist unto blood. To give our lives on the line. It's not done yet. This is what's being the bishops and the deacons. This is what they're bringing out to us. The understanding when, when you read, like um, Bishop was bringing out Sirach too. He was like, yeah, I right, can't pay your bills, but guess what? That's, that's the, 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 the ultimate thing that, that we're being built up to have to prepare our minds, our spirits for that death that's to come. To resist unto blood. Read that again. Ye have not yet. Ye have not yet. Resisted unto blood. Go ahead. Striving against sin. And that is the exhortation now that we are getting. That we see now in the scriptures. That's what we must exhort. That's why we exhort each other to keep pushing. And I'm a profitable servant. I ain't done yet, man. We're not done. Still got things to do. Get Micah chapter 4 verse 10. Micah chapter 4 verse 10. We have not yet resisted unto blood. Read that. Micah chapter 4, verse 10. Be in pain Uh and labor to bring forth. So it tells us to be in pain and labor to bring forth. Read. O daughter of Zion. Go ahead. Like a woman in travail. Read. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. Right. So our pain, we haven't even, we've started. But it's not over yet. We're going through, we're going to go through labor pains in this walk here. The persecutions is going to continue to rise. We put you put yourself out there, you, you our sisters on, on Facebook, brothers and sisters, we all gonna to, going to face that. The persecution is coming. The dragon is wroth. Every time they see a blitz, every time they see us on social media, every time they see the growth of the nation, guess what? We're coming closer and closer to that thing. And that's what we want to happen. That's why we go out to camp. Get that in um, uh, Isaiah 13. We go out to war because we want the wicked of our people to go into the gates of the nobles. 13, what is it, verse 1? Lift thee up a banner. Yes, sir. Isaiah chapter 13, verse 2. Yeah. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. That banner, let me get the images of our brothers um, teaching. Let me get those images, man. Let's get the images. So this is us lifting up the banner upon the high mountain. That banner is the Bible. Read on. You can scroll through them. Read. Exalt the voice unto them. Go ahead. Shake the hand. Continue to rebuke and reprove our people. The one thing our people hate is correction. Don't judge me. You can't tell me what to do. Yeah, you walking all crazy. You walking out of order, sis. You pushing a stroller with, with, with three babies in it, and all three of them got different fathers. And you dress like a whore and talk about we can't judge you or correct you. Ain't nobody stoning you with stones. We telling you, sis, you need to get your mind right. Fix yourself. How is that judgment? The judgment's going to come from the Most High when he puts you to death. You're getting minor judgment now with your STDs and whatever the hell you got going on with yourself. Read that again from the top. Lift up a banner. Read it right. Lift lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain. Go ahead. Exalt the voice unto them. Exalt the voice unto them. Read. Shake the hand. Reprove them. Rebuke them. Read. That they may go into the gates of the nobles. We have to teach until they go into the gates of the, they go to their governments against what we're doing. Right? And now that that teaching is is, is over, bro. It's it's not over, but the war has begun. You're seeing teaching going on in India, all over Africa, all over South America, Central America. You see, you're watching this go on. Our mindset can't be to stop now. It's over. We're in this thing. It's blood in and blood out now. We're in it. We can't stop it. We can't worry about what we've done yesterday. It has to continue to move forward. We're not done. Give me that Kobe Bryant clip. Give me Kobe. 
Kobe understood this. I mean, in a, a, a sports, you know what I mean? Sports, but watch what he said. This was heavy. And, and the Edomite was confounded when Kobe said the thing. Read that. I mean, not read that. Play that. You're up 2 0. What's the story? Are you Look at his face. This dude was a maniac. Yeah, he he was a competitor. Be hold on, hold on. Pause it, pause it. Rewind it, rewind it. I'm sorry. Look at his face. That determination on his face. Now, this is this is a basketball. We're doing the greatest work on the earth. We have to have even greater determination than what this man has. But play that now. Play that, play that. You're up 2 0. What's the story? Are you not happy or you're only half happy or? Still to be happy about. You're up 2 0. Job's not finished. Job finished? No, I don't think so. Okay. You're up 2 0. Right. So the, the dude was like, yo, you're up 2 0. You should be happy. So I was like, what is there to be happy about? I didn't get the ring yet. I didn't get to the end yet. Oh, you, you got you, you marched to Chicago, you're doing all these things, you just a great, great display. We're not done. We're not done yet. I got my marriage papers. I'm done. Nah, we're not done yet. We didn't get anything yet. We're not ruling. Christ's kingdom is the most high's kingdom is not on this earth yet. We haven't been persecuted. We have not yet resisted unto blood yet. That's what's written in regards to those are the steps to come in regards to when we're going to be done. Read, um, go back to Romans 12, verse 1. You got to skip some stuff. Romans 12, verse 1. So we must understand that thing. Romans 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Read it out. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, go ahead. by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. That we present our bodies a living sacrifice, a literal living sacrifice. Some of us are going to have to die, are going to die for this thing. That's the end game. That's what we all, look, I have to wrap my mind around it. Every time I get that slothful spirit, any, anybody knows me, my, my mind, I, hey, I, I, so I need motivation sometimes, right? Hey, my first thought, sometimes you're like, man, I ain't doing it. But I end up doing it, but it's like, yo, I, I'm, I'm trying to fix my mind around, look, my, my first thought has to be, yes, I got to do it. I got. That means there's still some growing that I have to do. The same thing in all of us. We all have to grow to the point where, look, man, that same determination, I ain't, I'm not done yet, so guess what? I, I got to do it. I got to keep pushing. When that, when that lack of motivation comes, comes into our minds, that discipline has to take over. When we lack motivation, discipline, the Holy Spirit has to work on us, and it has to take over. Right? Read that again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, mm -hmm. that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice. Read. Holy, acceptable unto God. Which is what? Which is your reasonable service. It's our reasonable service to give our life for our nation and for our God. That's our reasonable service. We're not worthy to, we, 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 we don't deserve the grace that, that, that Christ has given to us. But I mean, that the Most High has given to us by allowing Christ to die for us. It's reasonable for us to give our life the same way Christ, considering Christ. It's reasonable for us to give our life for this truth here. And we all have to wrap our minds around that and build ourselves up to that point. Right? Not saying that, hey, not saying that brothers is, is ready yet. But when the time comes, we some of us are going to be ready. Because the most high's will is going to be done on the earth. So we're preparing ourselves for that thing. That is our reasonable service. So what praise do we want from the most high? Um, let me skip some stuff. Give me, go straight to the parable. Get um Matthew. Chapter 25, Matthew 25. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. I'm sorry about that. Matthew chapter 25, verse 14. Go ahead. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling in a far, into a far country. Go ahead. Who called his own servants and delivered unto, unto them 
his goods. Right, so the kingdom of heaven is as a man that's traveling to a far, far country, and he called his servants and delivered his goods, right? We've all been, been given a portion of the goods that, from Christ, right? We've all been given that. Give me Romans chapter 12, verse 3. Go back to Romans 12, read verse 3. Romans chapter 12, verse 3. For I say, through the grace great given unto me. For I say, through the grace that was given unto me, read. To every man that is among you, mm -hmm. not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Right, so we, we went over, we're not supposed to praise ourselves, right? We went over not seeking our own glory, right? Don't think of ourselves highly than what we ought to think, read. But to think soberly. But to think clear-minded. Why? Read. According as God have, have dealt to every man the measure of faith. Once we, we walk through these doors and we understand that we Israel, every single one of us here has been given a measure of Christ, a measure of faith. Every single one of us has been given. The only person that had a full measure of that faith is Christ. Get that real quick. John 3 verse 34. The only person that had the full measure was Christ. That's why he was able to do what he did. He was able to discern what people speak, walk on water, heal. Christ had all those things. We've all been given a certain measure of that, though. Read that, John 3 and 34. John chapter 3, verse 34. Go ahead. For he whom God hath sent speaketh the words of God. Go ahead. For God giveth not the Spirit by measure unto him. Christ didn't get any measure of the Spirit unto him. He's the full measure. He got the full measure. We get bits and pieces of the Spirit now. Get Matthew 15, verse 15. No, get Ephesians 4. I'm sorry. Ephesians 4, verse 7. I'm sorry. Ephesians 4, verse 7. We're still dealing with uh, the measure that we've all been given. Right? The, the goods that the, that the master gave to his servants. Read. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 7. But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. We've all been given a measure of the gift of Christ. We've all been given a measure of the gift of Christ. Christ got the full measure when he died and was resurrected. Now the nation is being brought together. We all get bits and pieces of that thing. Every single one of us. Give me Matthew 15, verse 15. You want to rush through it? Matthew 15, verse 15. Matthew chapter 15, verse 15. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Declare unto us Matthew, this parable. Matthew 15, verse 15. Yes, sir. <clears throat> All right, go ahead, go ahead. Hold on, let me get it. You know what? Jump to Corinthians 12. You don't have time. 1 Corinthians 12. I wrote that wrong. 12 verse 7. Dealing with the different gifts that we walk into this body with. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7. Go ahead. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Right, so we've all been given the Spirit so that all can profit from the Spirit and the different gifts that was given unto us. None of us come in here with the same gifts. Some of us had multiple gifts of Christ, right? But none of us came here as the same. Every single one of us is needed in this body here. So at no point should anyone have, have an issue with what their role is in this walk here. You are necessary. It doesn't matter if you're, you're on the, the, the cleanup team. It matters. Everything that everyone does has a part in this nation being brought together, and we all are moving within the body of Christ. Read that again. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man mm -hmm. to profit with all. Read on. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. Right. Some of us have the Spirit by the word of wisdom. Read. To another, the word of, of knowledge. Go ahead. By the same spirit. Go, by the same spirit. We're getting it from the same spirit. Christ, read. To another, faith by the same spirit. Some brothers have, have some brothers and sisters, they've been blessed with the spirit of faith. That they don't, they don't really waver too much. They, they, don't, they, don't, they don't struggle with discipline and being motivated. They don't struggle with being motivated. They're like, I'm going to do it, and I'm going. Read on. To another, the gifts of healing. Read on. By the same spirit. By the same spirit, read. To another, the walking of the working of miracles. Read on. To another, prophecy. Uh-huh. To another, 
Discerning of spirits. These are all examples of the different spirits or the different gifts and the different goods that we've been given from Christ when we walk through these doors here. Read. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. Diverse kinds of tongues. Tongues real quick. Because there was a, there was a slight issue when, um, what, was it, what was the name of the program for the, the older gentlemen or the older people that don't go out to war? What's the name of that? Stewardship. The stewardship program first was launched. And we had some, some older brothers, you know what I mean? They got a little discouraged. Got a little discouraged because it was said, you know, they, they, they was under the mindset of, I'm, I'm never going to go to camp. And they really desired to go to camp. And then we thought about it. He was like, all right, don't worry. He said, look, man, get a medical excuse. You'll be fine. If it's ordained for you to do that thing, trust me, you're going to do it. But don't, don't sit there and, and sit on the gifts that you've been given. Brother, speak like three, four different languages. Do you not see what's going on with the Isaiah 11 and 11 project? And that we're going across the globe doing these different things. You're necessary. That, that diversity of tongues. I can't speak no languages. Right? But you got brothers that can speak English, that can speak um, Creole, that can speak Spanish. Oh, one brother, do those things, and you worried about not being able to go to camp. Look, man, use your gifts that the Most High gave you. You understand that you Israel. You have understanding of these scriptures here. Use the, and you've been given the gifts of tongues. You will be necessary. You are necessary. Pay attention to what's going on here. What you discouraged for? Keep your hands to the plow. Read on. Go back. Just had to touch on them tongues for a second. How much time we got? We good. Yes, go sir. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Uh -huh. But all these worketh that one in the self-same spirit. But all these working that one in the self-same spirit. We all work in that one spirit. We all form that body of Christ. Read. For, I'm sorry. But all these worketh that one in the self-same spirit. Go ahead. Dividing to every man. Severally, for as he as he will. Right. So it's been divided to every man severally according to the will of Christ, according to the will of God. Now go back to Matthew twenty-five, verse sixteen. Matthew, Read chapter, verse fifteen. Fifteen. Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse fifteen. Go ahead. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, uh -huh. and to another one, to every man according. To his several ability. He says to every man according to his several ability. So these talents were divided. Some of us have multiple talents that we bring in. Right? Read on. In straight way took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents. He says then he that received the five talent. Read. And traded with the same. And, and traded with the same. Read on. And made them other five talents. He made himself other five talents. Read. So and he multiplied those talents. Read on. And likewise, he that had received two, uh -huh. he also gained other two. So the person that was given two measures, two, two talents, he multiplied his two. Read on. But he that had received one mm -hmm. went and digged in the earth. He says, but he that had received one went and digged his talent in the earth. Read. And hid his Lord's money. And he hid his Lord's. It, we, none of us, and that's the thing. We've been given this talent from Christ. None of it is ours. Right? So when we have this understanding of who we are and we may have the gift of exhortation or the gift of tongues and things of that nature, we've been given that by Christ. When you dig that talent and hide that thing, it's a problem. Read on. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. Go ahead. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents. So he that received the five talents brought other five talents, read. Saying, Lord, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Said you gave me five talents, read. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. Right, he multiplied those talents. He multiplied those gifts. He made, he, he sat there, he did this work here, and he made sure that the nation grew. He himself grew and the nation grew at the same time. Read on. His Lord said unto him, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's the praise that we're looking for at the end. When Christ says, well done, thou good and faithful servant. That's what we want to hear. That's the, that's the end result. Not us praising ourselves. We want that praise from Christ. 
We want that reward from Christ. And we only get that thing by coming into the nation and dealing with our talents, increasing our own faith, increasing our gifts, and making sure that the nation grows based on our participation within the nation. Read. Thou has been faithful over a few things. He says we've been faithful over a few things. Read. I will make thee ruler over many things. Go ahead. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Enter into the joy of the kingdom. Read. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Mm -hmm. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. With two talents did the same. Read. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. So even the one with the two talents, he was told, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Read. Thou has been faithful over a few things. Uh -huh. I will make thee ruler over many things. Read. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He got the same joy of the Lord. He was given two. He made the most of those two talents. He didn't sit on his behind on the Sabbath day and sit home making excuses why he couldn't come. Right? He didn't sit amongst the congregation in plain clothes for, for five or six years, knowing that the school may need a, a leadership table built, and he's a master carpenter, and didn't, didn't want to say anything. He's a master carpenter. He can fix it. He can build these things and didn't say not a word because he didn't want others to, to take on his talent, and he wanted to get the glory of that thing. Read on. Then he which had received the one talent. Then he that received the one talent, read. Came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art a hard man. He said, Christ, I know that I knew that you was a hard man. Read. Reaping where thou hast not sown. You, you're gonna reap where you have not sown, read. In gathering there thou hast not straw. Read. And I was afraid. He said, Christ, I know that if I was to if I was to put my hand to the plow, that that you would get the credit for it. Right? You reap where you have not sown. Right? I don't want to keep this thing. I want to keep this talent to myself. I don't want others to receive any, any parts of my, I don't want to teach anybody anything that I know. I don't want anyone to know any. I want to be the, the grand pooba when it comes to my talent. I want to be the best musician. I want to be the best artist. I want to be the best public speaker. That's just me, and I'm not going to share that gift with anybody else. I'm going to dig that because I know that I'm not going to get the full credit for it. All praises has to go to you, Christ. Read on. And I was afraid. And I was afraid. I was scared. Some brothers are scared to do this thing, are scared to change, scared to become that profitable servant. Read. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. Go ahead. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. Hey, Christ, take, take back what is yours. I ain't do nothing with it because I ain't want to do nothing with it. You can have it back now. You got to be careful. You, none of us was given this understanding to know that we're Israel, to not, be, not, to not even be an example to the nations, to sit there and not be amongst your brothers and sisters. If, if our elders hid their talents, you wouldn't have officers teaching now. You wouldn't have captains teaching. If our deacons hid their talents and didn't, didn't share, his talents, share their talents with us, you wouldn't have congregations all over the world. If our bishop didn't share his talents, we wouldn't have deacons. We wouldn't have this organization here. In all humility, not thinking of itself, but thinking of the nation. That's our, that has to be our mindset because this thing is not done yet. We're not done. Read on. His Lord answered and said unto him. Here's what Christ told him. Thou wicked and slothful servant. He called them evil and slothful. Evil and slothful. Read. Thou knowest that I reap where I sow not. You knew that I gave you this, 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 this wisdom. You knew that I gave you this portion of spirit for a reason. And for you to share that with your brothers and sisters and with your nations. To bring forth, to bring forth my kingdom. And to continue to increase our nation. You knew that thing. Read. Read. Thou knowest not. Thou knowest that I reap where I sowed not. Read. And gathered where I have not straw. Read on. Thou ought therefore to have put my money to the exchange. You should have took that, those goods that I gave you and brought it to the nation. Brought it within your congregation. 
brought those things to the forefront so that your nation can benefit from that spirit of Christ that was given to you. You should have brought that thing to the exchanges. That's what you should have done. Not separate yourself not having the spirit or not hiding it, not being too fearful to step out and do what you're uncomfortable doing in this walk here. Read. And then at my coming, I should have received my own with usury. Right, that's the whole thing. Christ has to receive that gift that he gave us. He must receive it back from us with usury. He must receive that thing. So we, we, if we're afraid to work or if we're afraid to step out of our comfort zone and become that man or that woman of God, Christ can't use us. And we're not going to get the reward. Right? Last couple of scriptures, man, and we'll wrap up. Give me, um, let me jump. Give me Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. So remember that, man. Whenever we're, whenever we're doing this work here, you may not get the glory or you may not get the praise that you may feel as if you're supposed to get. We got to examine our spirits because what we want to hear from Christ is job well done, a good and faithful servant after the job is done. Right now, we're doing what we're commanded to do with the gifts that Christ gave us. Read that. Second Chronicles 15, verse 7. Second Chronicles chapter 15, verse 7. Go ahead. Be ye strong, therefore. He says, be ye strong, therefore, read. And let not your hands be weak. Let not our hands be weak. Read. For your work shall be rewarded. We are going to get our reward as long as we're not weary in well-doing and weary in doing this work and continue to grow, continue to mature in this truth. Last verse, Jeremiah 31, read verse 16 and 17. Jeremiah 31, verse 16 and 17. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 16. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord. Refrain thy voice from weeping. So now is not the time to be, be down on ourselves and weeping, brothers and sisters. We are involved in the greatest movement ever on this planet Earth here. We're about, That's Most High's right. kingdom is about, you're looking at the, the forming of the Most High's nation, the army of the Most High God. You're watching his kingdom being formed right before the eyes of our enemies in the land of our captivity. There's no time to weep. Read. In thine eyes from tears. Go ahead. For thy work shall be rewarded. He says our work will be rewarded. We can't be weary in well-doing. Keep pushing. Read. Saith the Lord. Go ahead. And they shall come again from the land of the enemy. Read on. And there is hope in thine he end. Says, there is hope in our end. There is hope in our end. We must believe in that thing. Read. Saith the Lord. Go ahead. That thy children shall come again to their own border. Brothers and sisters, Officer you want to thank us, Columbia, South Carolina. It's my time. Shalom, y'all. Most high in Christ, bless. Enjoy the rest of your day. Shalom. What is the nation? Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation is you.